So that's basically it. Uh, the other protocol is uh, whenever I say to the yoga mat, you have to hear the music, the little uh, sound bite music from the Adam West versions of Batman, where he used to say to the Batcave, and there's a little bit of music that goes, -la 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 -la. so I hope you're ready for that. To the yoga mat. Yeah, I hope you're doing it. And sit if you're not already. So Swagatam means welcome, Swa is yourself, Gatam is come, arrive. So uh, cross legs, sitting on a block is a good idea for 99.999% of people. If you haven't got a block, you might have a book, such as this marvellous cookery book that I've never read, but isn't it a lovely cover called Made in India. Look at that beautiful book. Absolutely beautiful, and I apologise <coughs> to the person who bought it to me for me that I haven't read it yet, but I will. Cross legs, gap between the legs and pelvis. You can sit on more than one book or block, and if you are, then you should take a blanket like this or a towel. If you don't have a blanket, those of you who don't have towels or books, then you know what's going on in your house. You need towels and books. So a towel can be taken, uh, a book under the bum, or a blanket in a block. That's if you're sitting on quite a high lift, two blocks. We take Pinyana Mudra, palms up, index finger, thumb tip touching. We've got this gap between the legs and pelvis. We're probably sitting on a block. We might be sitting on two with a blanket under the shins. And we're going to settle. If possible, you breathe through your nose. If not, you know, uh, it's nice, if it's difficult to breathe through the nose, it's nice to do a jala nadi, nasal salt water, nasal cleanse in the morning, which I do every morning. And the idea of a jala nadi, of course, is connected with the three channels that are mentioned in most tantric and hatha yoga texts the Ida, the Pingala, and in the middle, the Sushumna. And these channels sometimes are correlated, well, they're always correlated, correlated with left and right and middle, sometimes directly with the nostrils. And that's how we're going to correlate them for a little practice, a purification practice at the beginning here, where we're going to visualize three channels, and this is a method that you know, we find in Bun, which is a, kind of, is a, a Tibetan uh, influenced by Buddhism and uh, Tibetan shamanism before Buddhism arrived in the 7th century and then again in the 11th. So in this practice, you visualize two channels that correlate to your nostrils. Each channel moves up inside the head to the top of the skull and then down to the pelvic floor where they co-terminate. So you've got a channel correlating to each nostril, it comes up, it's the top of your head, it comes down to the pelvic floor where they co-terminate. Then there's a central channel. Okay? That co-terminates to the pelvic floor as well. So three channels all meet at the same point of the pelvic floor. The, 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 at the top end, however, they don't. They correlate to the nostrils or the central channel just carries right on up above the crown of the head to the Dwadashanta, 12 finger widths above the crown of the head. Okay, so that's your basic, imagine, I hope you can imagine that, okay? Now I won't go into all the technical details because there's some sort of, there's a swapping around with genders and so on, but we're just going to all do the same practice. And that is we're going to imagine that the channel that correlates to your left nostril is white in colour. And the channel that correlates to your right nostril is reddish, tawny. Pingala in Sanskrit, so reddish brown or reddish or orange, different texts say different things, even yellow some texts say. And then the central channel is seen as blue, okay, so you've got those three channels, just do that if you've got those three channels with your hands like that. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, well done, <laughs> good job. Okay, so now you're visualizing those. <clears throat> Remember, they sort of bounce off the top of your skull on the inside as they come and then bounce back and down, 
co-terminating the pelvic floor, terminating with the nostrils, or <clears throat> what's known as the Dwada Shanta, 12 finger words. Now we're going to start with <clears throat> the left channel, which we're going to call the Ida. There are technical uh, differences, but we're going to call it the Ida at the moment, which means <clears throat> uh, like satisfying, nourishing. So, and we're going to imagine we're breathing in green light through that channel down to the pelvic floor. It will swap channels and then come back up this green light through the opposite channel and out of the nostril as blue light. It's coming in green, moving through green, comes out as blue. Okay, just begin that practice through the left nostril. You imagine as best you can, it comes down all the way down, filters this down to the pelvic floor. You hold it there for a moment while it swaps lines, like you might swap on a tube train, swap lines, and then up out the other, and it comes out as blue light <clears throat> through that opposite nostril. And you just keep that going. And as you're doing this, <clears throat> you're imagining or thinking or contemplating that that green light is purifying, cleansing. Okay, and it's cleansing obstacles and obscurations to do with the past. And to do with aversion. And a couple of other things as well, but we just keep it with the past and aversion. So a few rounds of this green light coming in through your left nostril, through that channel, up to the crown, down to the pelvic floor, swaps. Out the pelvic floor, there's a little breath retention while it's what you breathe out. Out the side, the other channel, comes out as blue light, you're purified. Obstacles and obscurations. To do with the past. And to do with aversion. <clears throat> one more round of the one you're on. You like coming out, so one more round, you begin another round whenever you're ready. And when you're ready to breathe in again, after breathing out the blue light, you breathe in green light through the right nostril down, exactly the same, but the other way around. Just imagining. As you breathe in and it swaps channels, comes out, and this time it comes out pink light <clears throat> through the opposite nostril. And it's purifying light. Green light is associated with purification. <clears throat> Obstacles and obscurations <clears throat> to do with the future. Hmm. And to do with craving or greed, obstacles and obscurations. Can almost imagine that green light kind of gathers in a breath pause at the pelvic floor, called a kumbhaka, breath pause is a kumbhaka, <clears throat> and it swaps, comes out the other side. Pink light, obstacles to do with the future. Obstacles to do with greed or craving. Green coming in, pink coming out. Purifying. One more round after the one you're on. And then we're going to breathe in, here, breathing in through both nostrils simultaneously, green light, purifying light, down to the pelvic floor where they meet 
<clears throat> they, co they mingle and then they rise up through the central channel, which remember is a blue channel. <clears throat> that green light comes up and it comes out of the crown of your head or above the crown of the head, the Dwarfish Sunday, as black smoke. Don't worry, it's carbon neutral. It dissolves without any environmental impact whatsoever. It dissolves without a trace. Traces are dissolved. Both nostrils in, green light, down through the channels, down where they co-mingle. This is one of the meanings of Hatha Yoga, the mingling of the energy from the left and right channel associated with the sun and moon, hence the association Hatha, sun, moon. Sun, heart doesn't mean sun in Sanskrit, or ta. Ta does mean moon, but <clears throat> they just equate those with the sun and moon. So focus on that co-mingling, gathering, and then up through the central channel, and it comes out with black smoke, and you're purifying obstacles and obscurations to do with the present. And to do with ignorance. And that black smoke coming out of the Dwarva Santa, 12 big widths above the crowd of the head, completely evaporating without a trace into the infinite. It's like a single grain of rice will dissolve without a trace into an ocean. <clears throat> Last round. breathing. So we're instructed to sit in what the Tibetans use the word Rigpa, which is their version of the Sanskrit word Vidya, which is connected, is cognate with our own uh, word, uh, video, to see into see. Comes from a uh, Proto Indo European word. Okay, now give your fingers a little wiggle and slow and easy bring yourself out of there. You might want to stretch your legs out and rub them a bit to bring a bit of energy. Could be slow, could be faster. Just bring spreading the energy. And breathing deep and natural. You can rub the face, the hand, the eyes. This is all part of traditional. Trulkua, which is <clears throat> Tibetan yoga, but Tibetan yoga, of course, comes originally from the Kokan, a part of India, which is now uh, where we find Karnataka and Goa. Now we're going to come to a kneeling position. Now some of us do need to put uh, either a block between the heels and buttocks, not, not a book in this case, a block, like a yoga block, or <clears throat> a towel, towels are great. Uh, read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for more in interesting information on towels. And sitting in Vajrasana, so Vajra means thunderbolt. And I was very pleased when I discovered my last name means thunder in Norse. I said, yes, that's great. <clears throat> so thought this is thunderbolt, but it also can mean diamond, adamantine, that which is indestructible. Originally, it was the weapon of Indra, who had thunderbolts that he threw. <clears throat> very much like Zeus, for reasons we won't go into now. There are reasons. So we're sitting by Drasa and perhaps moving on our shins. Huh? Moving on our shins. Now we're going to do another little uh, tantric practice. And that is we're simply going to send an ohm up through the central channel. So this practice is called Uchara. Make sure you're comfortable. You can sit with a block between your and buttocks. If your ankles are not comfortable, roll a blanket or towel underneath your front ankles, like a very thin little roll. Put that, come to your hands and knees, put it under your front ankles. Boom, that should sort out your ankles or cramping in the feet. Uh, and then the block between the heels and buttocks. So here we're going to visualize Om as light 
moving up through the central channel, which we've already pointed to, moving up. And as we chant it, as we come towards the end, we come towards what is signed using the Roman alphabet with an M with a dot underneath it. An M with a dot underneath it is a particular mark in some script, just signified in the Devanavi as simply a dot, which is called the Anuswara, which is a, is a nasal. It's not always ma. Ma is a nasal, but also na is a nasal, and a uh is a nasal. In other words, there are sounds that you feel in your nose, like I'm talking nasally now, like nerds are supposed to talk nasally. It's not in your nose, right? So we're going to make it as a pure nasal rather than a labial nasal. A labial nasal is one you make with the lips. So that would be ma. But we're not going to make it as ma. We're going to just keep it pure, like in the French bon. Huh? The French word for good, bon. So, uh, visualize it as light, make it super nasally at the end, and there are reasons for that to do with unblocking, particularly this blockage here, the Maya Grunti at the forehead center. Make it particularly nasally. I'll give you one demonstration. I might use my hand to just show you the mantra moving up. It comes up and out, <clears throat> and then we'll do another. We're going to do three. So, demonstration first, and then three together. So, this is the demonstration. You're just watching this. Oh. Okay, now you do it. Take a deep breath in. says that the meaning of Om is understood through the repetition of Om. Taj Japaz Tad Ata Avanam. Taj Japaz means uh, that murmuring, Taj Japaz. Tad Ata, that purpose, the true, that purpose. Bhavanam becomes, that's it, becomes. So after repetition, the the purpose, the understanding of what Om is, comes. Not through thinking about it, not through reading about it, but through repetition. Now from there, we're going to come into Atomukushwanasana, that is to say, downward facing dog. So <clears throat> if you wouldn't mind coming with your hands and knees, I'd be ever so grateful to you. And you can do it now, right? On your hands and knees, and then just have a look at your hands, take them forwards of your shoulders, and then Check that they're equidistant from the sides and the front of the mat. Hmm? So that the left hand is exactly, the left little finger is the same distance from the side of the mat as the right little finger is. And check your fingers and middle fingers are facing forwards. There are yoga teachers that tell you to turn the middle fingers out. That's okay, but not ever turning them in. We never say turn them in for lots of reasons. Now, tuck under your toes, lift your bum, and push from front to back. Now, you checked your hands, so now you should check your feet. We are not looking for the hands and feet to be the same distance from the sides of the mat as each other, but for the left hand and the right hand to be the same distance as each other, and for the left foot and the right foot to be the same distance from the side of the mat as each other. That means your hands can be wide or narrow, the feet can be wide or narrow, so long as your left little toe is the same distance from the side of the mat as your right little toe, and the same with the little fingers, the right. Little fingers, same distance from the side of the mat as the left. And then we extend up with thousands of different things you say about down face dog, but I won't say he was down, but I will say he was back. 
You can bend your knees because we're quite stiff often in the morning. So you can bend the knees and move your back left and right. Extending through the inner armpit is an instruction that I enjoy very much. The inner armpit is the same as the outer chest. Extending means moving in a direction from uh, the arm towards the pelvis. Okay, well done, that will do. Come back to hands and knees, wag your tail a bit, take a few breaths, start to get a little bit into the body as a sort of place to become absorbed. Now when you're ready, take one foot, you choose, doesn't matter, because we're going to do the other one afterwards, into the place of its own hand. If it's the right foot, goes into the place of the right hand, if it's the left foot, goes into the place of the left hand. In other words, the hand has to move out of the way. Okay? So, once you've taken the foot forwards, then tuck your back toes under, lift your back knee, stretch it and land it a few times with a view to feeling the fibers that you're stretching right up to the groin. And adjust and readjust until your placement feels spacious and absorbing. This week we've been talking about three aspects of Vajrasati Yoga, play, purpose, and signs. One of the signs is absorption. Raise your arms up, tone your tummy. Raise your arms up, tone your tummy. Now, unless you have bursitis, uh, inflammation of the bursa in the knee, the fluid containing sacs in the joints, in this case the knee joints, you probably don't need extra support under your knee, even if it's uncomfortable. What you need to do instead is release the groin upwardly. Now that's more profound than perhaps it initially sounds. Release the top of the inner thigh and the back leg. Release upwardly. Now, when anything happens in yoga, it happens on the lots of planes. It's going to happen on the respiratory plane, breath. It's going to happen on the uh, most emotional plane or attitudinal plane, known as bhava. So you're going to feel an emotional or an attitudinal softening or releasing as well. And then, of course, on the musculoskeletal or myofascia plane. All simultaneously, so it becomes holistic. Okay, now come down. It's great to spend a long time on that. Well, come down, back to your hands and knees. And here's your opportunity, another opportunity to wag your tail. And remember the three aspects that I've mentioned in passing, I'm going to mention them more. And that is purpose and play and signs. Huh? Leela is play. Purpose is Arta. Signs is Lakshana. Now bring your other foot forward and uh, into the place of its, its own hand. Take your back knee and lift it and replace it so you do feel a love, what I think of as a lovely stretch, I guess it's subjective, round the inner groin of the back leg, but also around the front groin of the back leg. And you do that repeatedly until it starts to become absorbing. That's one of the signs, the lakshanas. The play is the lifting and moving repeatedly. The purpose is I'm doing it for a reason to become absorbed. And the sign of that is that you become absorbed. <clears throat> and the sign of absorption is breath deepens and doubt disappears. Doubt is there because we're reaching to places that don't have information for information. But when we arrive here, it's full of information. So when we become absorbed. Now, one hand on top of the other on your leg. And jump lightly, tone your tummy. So that's a light in and up. Breathe through your nose, focus your attention on your inner groin of your back leg and know that any release there will necessarily be a release on so many planes simultaneously as you raise your arms up. So it has to be that we incorporate, we acknowledge that breath has to come along, attitude has to shift potentially. And visualization is also perhaps part of your release. Huh? These are part of the seven aspects of tantric yoga. Breath, attention, visualization, bandha, mudra, mantra, and attitude. So we're looking for a, a giving attitude. There's a lot to say about giving in yoga in terms of yoga's history. 
But let's just summarize it by saying giving is the most important word that you can use in reference to yoga. If I had to give up every word but one, I'd keep the word giving to give. Okay, calm down. For yoga, I mean. Okay, now back to hands and knees. Perhaps a little wag of the tail. Some deep, honest breaths. Perhaps expressive breaths. Now we're going to take the hands really wide. If you've got a yoga mat, go as wide as the yoga mat and even slightly beyond. The uh, little fingers could come off. And then feet similarly. I call it the Komodo dragon of Adho Swanasana. Now we're facing dog because it's so wide. Huh? And then you breathe into it. And what you're feeling for are those three basic qualities. Play, purpose and sign. You play with a purpose. The purpose is to disappear. The reason we want to disappear or become absorbed is because what we become absorbed in is the living moment. And the living moment is the antidote to grasping. The only antidote to grasping. Reading books about Buddhism, for example, that say don't grasp, it causes suffering, grasping causes suffering, doesn't stop you grasping. <laughs> if it was that easy, we'd just give everyone a book and just say, just read this, and boom, everyone's sorted. But give yourself to the living moment through play, here and now. Okay, well done. Come down again, nice and easy. And back to your Vajrasana, that's your kneeling position. Don't forget, please, to put a, a blanket or a towel between the heels and buttocks if your knees are tight. And that tightness might not be a sort of ultimate condition. It might be temporary, it might be just today. But look after your knees, please. Rest one hand on top of the other and your legs, breathe through your nose. Keep the jaw soft, and you might find, as I find, yourself moving on the shins, side to side. If you just moved on the shins while daydreaming, that's pretty pointless and from a yoga point of view. But if you're moving with purpose, remember, so play without purpose, that's not going to cut the mustard. And your purpose, I'm playing for a reason, to disappear into this moment to become absorbed. And a very common term for this is layanam in Hatha Yoga texts and Tantric texts. Layanam. Melting can mean melting. Huh? Into the moment, dissolving into the moment. And this, from a yoga point of view, is also our bhakti, our devotion aspect. Giving and the, the present moment is often described using a feminine term, so we can even describe it as giving to the goddess. If that is a sort of, uh, for me, that really works really well because the goddess is liberating, beautiful, completely and just going to trust her, and she's the living moment. Okay, release your hand and stretch your legs out in front of you. Well done. Again, a little energy bump, so give yourself a little rub around your knees, around your ankles, around the lower back, around the face, uh, the neck, chest, wherever. You can rub, or you can pat, as long as it feels vitalizing. This is one of the aspects of Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga is an enormously complicated situation, which is why in SOAS they've got a five-year project with a team of at least ten studying what is Hatha Yoga. Anyway, it's enormously complicated, because we'll go to it now, but hands behind your bum, by about the length of a paperback book, okay? About the length of a paperback book. And then bend your legs, and so you can just about get the balls of the feet down on the floor. Great. Now here's the thing, many people are nervous of doing this. Understandably, because there are arteries up into the brain that go through the back of the neck, that can, you know, don't like being compressed, especially as you get older. You don't have to compress them if you do this. Chest and head together. Hmm? So that's the antidote, not to hold your head half up, half down. Now tone your tummy, draw it in and up. Right. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, lift your pelvis. Exhale, travel it forwards, up, over. Now commit your head, as I just suggested, and then accompany it with the chest. That's how you look after your head and neck. That's how you look after the arteries. The reason people resist this is because it's a massive commitment to the present, to the goddess, 
And most of us are sort of habituated to not giving, to clinging out of habit, not because you're bad, we're all lovely people, we're trying our best. Now keep pulling your chest over, you can move between the four points, and about his hands, feet, and the feet, and then come down, because you probably want to by now. Okay, cross your legs, cross your legs. Draw the butterfish out and back. We'll take two or three or four deep breaths. So I'm drawing the butterfish out and back several times. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm bringing attention to it now. Now I adjust my butterfish back from the outside of the ischial tuberosities, the sitting bones. Let me show you the sitting bones. You probably know the sitting bones. Some yoga teachers call them the sits bones or something like that. Here's the sitting bones. The bottom of the pelvis is the pelvis. Sitting bones here. Huh? So we want to be towards the inner front edge of the sitting bones so that the pelvis just has a little tilt, hmm? a little tilt. That will then bring the lumbar, it's a bit twisted this way, brings the lumbar uh, forwards a little bit, the thoracic spine moves in its natural way. You get your natural spine. The lumbar should have a natural lordosis, a natural inward curve. Not too much, but a natural a lordosis. Hmm? So, <clears throat> sitting bones, ischial tuberosities. For me, I adjust from the outside, but I know many people who adjust from the inside of the sitting bones. And I think, I theorise, because I've done a few questionnaires on this, it does seem to be that more women than men adjust from more medially. And it is also a fact that women do tend to have sitting bones further apart than, than men do, as a general rule, and sacrums that are wider. So anyway, whichever way it works for you, palms up, breathe deep, drop the shoulder blades. Now if you really take instructions on board, like drop the shoulder blades, they really, uh, they have profound implications. Drop the shoulder blades. Now we're looking for efficacy. Something that actually works. So we don't just want to think, drop the shoulder blades, and then nothing happens and we don't really care. We want to hear the instruction, experiment, play with various attitudinal shifts. Remember, the different aspects of tantric meditation include attitude. Oh. until you alight on the attitudinal shift that you really do feel the shoulder blades drop. And we'll probably get the wrong, try the wrong things before we find the right thing. Trying, doing, these work don't tend to work. Simply because the tension associated with I'm supposed to be doing something is the very thing that's driving your shoulder blades up your back in the first place. Shoulder blades going down, of course, is a necessary aspect of the chest being able to lift. And the chest being able to lift is a necessary aspect of taking weight off the lumbar vertebrae. And taking weight off the lumbar vertebrae is a necessary aspect of letting the discs work their way back in. And working, letting the discs work their way back in is a necessary aspect of taking agitation off the nerves. And taking agitation of the nerves is a necessary aspect of dropping into the present moment, giving to the goddess. Inhale when you're ready and lift up from your inner groins. Exhale, turn towards the screen if you've positioned yourself that way, or just turn either direction, doesn't matter, <clears throat> and breathe deep. Jaw soft. It's a meditation, so you have to interoceptive. <clears throat> which means you have to perceive the inside of your body. You might find utility in movement, say for instance, moving left and right as a way of massaging into the tissue <clears throat> to get the tissue to comply more, to agree more, to allow more. And there are various physiological reasons why massage helps and there are various psychophysical reasons why massage helps. But the bottom line is it helps. Okay, return to center, palms up. 
Catch your breath. Take a few deep breaths. Then on your next natural inhale, lift up from, from the inner groin. And turning, the other direction, of course. So you're turning. <clears throat> the other direction. Breath is everything in yoga. Someone just sent me a t-shirt. I'm wearing it today, actually. She's just started a company and she said, please, will you wear my t-shirt? And I was like, well, if I like it. <laughs> she sent it to me and I do like it. Partly because it says, and I've only just rocked this, inhale, exhale on the front. And I've always wanted a t-shirt that says, breath is everything. So it's kind of, you know, says a similar thing, inhale, exhale. Breath is everything. On the bottom of the t-shirt, it says in uh, Tibetan script, Om Mani Padmi Hong, all praise to the jewel at the heart of the lotus. And those two things are connected in ways that perhaps we'll look at. <clears throat> but right now, we're just breathing, moving, playing. Play, purpose, and signs. Vila, Arta, Lakshina. You could also use the word linger, <clears throat> which means sign as well, or significator or mark. Play, purpose, and signs. Back to the center. <clears throat> Excuse me, palms up, deep breaths. Palms up, deep breaths. So deep means natural. Draw, soft, breathing. Okay, give your fingers a little wiggle, perhaps extend them and Flex the hands a little bit. Then we're going to come onto our forearms, the ulnar bones here, onto the floor. So just bring those onto the floor. Just move this chair. Okay. Forearms onto the floor. Voila, easy. Look at this. Okay. Forearms on the floor. Like this. Okay. And then stretch your legs back. And Movement is absolutely part of yoga. Leela, that's why I'm using the Sanskrit so you understand very clearly it's not my personal angle on it, but it's absolutely fundamental to yoga. Play. Play with purpose. Those two things go together. Otherwise, play is just idle movement. So you're moving in ways that are absorbing. So, for instance, my heels are going backwards and forwards, but my pelvis is also drifting left and right. But I'm not doing it randomly, I'm doing it with a purpose to disappear into the living moment, to dissolve my sort of uh, externally constructed self into this living moment. Okay. Okay, well done. Knees forwards and come up. If you do uh, manage to play like that, your longevity and posture goes up exponentially. You don't get out of breath if you're tired. That's because you're sharing the load. Lactic acid doesn't build up. Good, from there, stretch your legs out. Okay, stretching your legs out. Again, another energy bath, super play. So give yourself a little rub. Round the thighs, round the knees, round the buttocks, round the pelvis, round the face. You know, just and make sure it feels effective. It's not about do, doing it because we're just doing it. But it should be effective, it should be vitalizing. So do it in a way that's vitalizing. You can patch and rub, it should feel vitalizing. From there, we're gonna bring our hands behind our heads, okay? With fingers interlaced. Now here, again, it's an opportunity, believe it or not, to absorb into the goddess, which is a metaphor for the living moment. And we call her a goddess because the Sanskrit word prakriti is feminine. And prakriti is para, praskrit, which means to ultimately make, everything ultimately made. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, physical sensations, birds, butterflies, trees, flowers, everything. Yeah, even Donald Trump. Everything is made is property, and everything is everything. Everything's connected to everything else in property. How do you, uh, why, and how do you serve the goddess? And you give to her, and why does it serve you? Because it negates clinging. Why does that serve you? Because then you're not distracted from your true essence nature, which then becomes revealed. Whole of yoga philosophy in one minute. Uh, lean your body back, 
apply 60 degrees and then raise your toes up when it feels right so they come level with your eyes now here's how you can worship the goddess you don't have to keep it static you explore you delve into it you breathe into it this is of course of course called Ardha Navasa half boat and it's a good way of working into lockdown belly <laughs> okay well done doing good ish <laughs> and your legs hug your legs lift your chest so coming on up from that and just moving left and right if you can find utility in it well obviously we're not here to just sort of do what we're told like the game of simon says or in this case jim says that's not what we're here for is it we're moving with a purpose left and right and the purpose is to become absorbed in the richness of the living moment that heals you just like deep sleep heals you because she delivers you one of the names of the goddess of course is tara and she's associated with delivering you you know like liberating you directly and this present moment, this present moment with all its rich sensations delivers you. And why do we not normally get delivered then? Normally we're in the past, aren't we? That's why we did the meditation at the beginning. Or we're in the future. Or in a state of ignorance in the present. In other words, everything being grasped for mine. This is mine, this isn't mine, this I like, this I don't like. That's not giving to the moment. Giving to the moment is giving all of that. And that's why we're moving. That's the purpose of yoga practice, of all these postures. Okay, now we know the purpose. We're more enthusiastic even for full bow pose. So rub your legs, round the buttocks, round the face, everything. You know, get the body feeling vital, vitalized, energized. Because what we're doing is bringing our attention into this living moment through the body. The body is a portal. The body is in fact just a mental construct. The reality of the body is it's interpenetrated with the whole of creativity or reality, as we might say, the goddess. Now we're going to lean back by 30 degrees, 30 degrees, and we're going to raise our legs up by the rather sad and sorry and upsetting 60 degrees. No, Jim, no, tell me it's not true. It is true. It's a sad and awful event. Stretch your arms forward. Now, for some of us, it's just too much, right? So you can bend your knees and do the same thing. As long as your thighs are at the same level, you can have your knees bent like this. It's still a bit too much, but it's a bit less too much than with a big straight. You can tolerate it, do it like an exercise class, but that wouldn't be yoga. That's more like a Pilates class. Pilates is great, Pilates is intelligent, but Pilates isn't yoga. Right? The purpose of yoga is to disappear into the living sensation. Okay, all right, bend your knees. Well done. Uh, from there, we're going to count and sit on a block or a book, a block or a book, or even a couple of books. So I've got a block here. I've got these marvelous things. I've got, I'm not telling you for any other reason that, that they're marvelous. Look at this. That looks, that's an ordinary block. But look, it's got a little, it's in there, my block, in this marvelous block cover that were made by Yoga Trading. It's not an advert because they don't exist anymore. Yoga Trading, Bernadette Gosling's shop. Brighton, and she recently gave me all her old stock very kindly, including these marvelous and soft block covers. If you don't have those, sorry, you know, but you can always use a book and cover that with something soft, like a uh, towel or something. Legs extend in front of you. Draw the butter out and back. Good job. I lean forwards as I adjust the butter on each side and I lean to the opposite side of the side I'm adjusting. So indeed I can come to the inner front edge of the ischial tuberosities, which I showed you before uh, on the uh, skeleton there. Legs are going to come over to your left side. So you bring the legs over to your side. And the position we want is that somewhere between say here and here, between the bottom of the shin and the top of the foot. This area here. <laughs> seeing, pointing, seeing. Goes onto the foot arch of the lower leg. So you should have one foot pointing back, 
and one put, foot pointing to the side. One back, one to the side. And then the one on top, you know, should be pressing into the one underneath, the, the lower shin is pressing. And then you lift and shift your bum. Now it's perfectly possible, it's very likely for many of us, that you're gonna need more height than one foot or block. If your knees are tight, that's a good way to help that problem, to take more height. But if you have more height than one block, you might need something on the floor behind you, another book for your hand to come to, because we're gonna lift and turn. So inhale when you're ready, lift from your groins up. Exhale, turn away from your feet, but keep your attention with your feet. Breathe through your nose. Keep your attention back in your back leg and your feet. And what is lovely, I think, is that there's this opportunity to release the back thigh. And remember from before, releasing the shoulder blades when we talked about that, we discovered it wasn't something we could do as such. In fact, the doing is kind of what's driving the leg to lift, the shoulder blades to lift, the tension in the body. So undoing is what's needed. And rather obviously, undoing can't be done. <laughs> so how do we approach it then? Attitude shift. Remember the aspects of tantric yoga, one of them, one of the most important ones is attitude shift. And we shift into an attitude of trust. Trusting that the moment will sort it out. And as soon as you trust the moment, then it does. The goddess starts to deliver. You have to give yourself to her fully for her to be able to look after you, for her to be able to lift you. You have to let go of her embrace. Otherwise, she can't help you, you know. So this is breath, giving, trusting, this shift of attitude that affects our body and our breath profoundly. Turning back. And take a breath or two or three. Very simple. I find it a powerful pose. So just bring our legs to the other side. So if you're ready to swing them straight over, then go ahead. Otherwise you might want to stretch them out. That's also fine. Right. And similarly, well, identically in a way, somewhere between the talus bone, that's the prominent bone on the top of the front foot there, that's the bone that interacts with the bottom end of your shin bone, somewhere between the talus and the bottom of the tibia, you're going to press or land across the medial and lateral arches of the bottom foot, <coughs> across the, the sole of the bottom foot. Remember, the bottom foot is pointing across, the top foot is pointing back. <laughs> I hope my exaggerated gesticulations are across and back. I hope they're getting, <laughs> getting the message across. Now lift and shift. So you remember before we talked about how the body is interconnected with so many fibers and you can feel that as you lift and shift, you can place those fibers optimally, most conducively. Mm -hmm. Breath is deep. This back leg, what will be the back leg, really needs to release. But remember, a release isn't something you do. Okay. Now, <laughs> it's kind of ironic when you try to release. There's a very funny, has anyone have you ever seen Alan Partridge? Do that if you've seen Alan Partridge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then put your hands down. And then do it if you like Alan Partridge, you'll find it funny sometimes. Yeah, me too. Oh, and also a bit car crashy as well at the same time. There's a funny part of Alan, uh, Alan Partridge where he's got his own relaxation tape playing. He's trying to relax in the travel tavern where he's living. And he just keeps getting up and adjusting his shoes and getting down and shutting the drawer because he's, <laughs> it's really brilliant little skit of trying to relax. It's an oxymoron. So we're not trying to release the back leg, we're just trusting 
We're relaxing in the moment, we're giving to the goddess. Because what's keeping it up is a lack of trust. And what causes a lack of trust is a lack of knowing. And what causes a lack of knowing is reaching for the past, reaching for the future, reaching for ideas about yourself in the present, which we've already been practicing or purifying right from the get-go. Inhale, lift and turn away from your feet. And keep your attention back with your back leg. Come on. If you keep your attention back, it stops you pulling up your roots, as it were. So breathe deep, eyes soft, and relax, that is rest, in trust, in the goddess's arms, as it were, metaphorically. Because she can hold you, she can support you only when you give to her, huh? when you rest into her support, when you surrender to her support. Much as she's there, ready and willing to support you, if you don't let go into it, you'll never know it's there. you never think it's there. Like, well, there is no support. Well, you've, never let, you've never let go. But everyone here has let go, sometimes by accident. And then you feel her support, as it were. We accidentally let go when we forget to run our programs. When something's rich, like your first sip of coffee in the morning, or a beautiful sunset, or when something's intense, like a wedding or a funeral, you know. You forget to run your programs and you feel alive because you know who you are for a moment, clearly dis discerning without effort. So deep, honest breaths, eyes soft, jaw soft, throat soft. Okay. Turn back to center. Catch a deep breath or two or three or four. The breath is everything. You don't, you know, giving to the breath is like giving to the goddess. You don't have to call it the goddess if you find that doesn't work for you. Some people don't like that kind of language. But just think of it giving to the moment. In a sort of earlier Buddhist way, the Buddhists didn't talk about, in early Buddhism, they did later, but giving to the goddess. They absolutely did later though. But early Buddhism just called Satipatthana, Satipatthana Sutta, Four Foundations of Mindfulness. Okay, coming out and putting your block or hook to one side. <clears throat> coming back onto hands and knees. And you can move pelvis this way or that way. Now this is the next pose, it's gonna really turn the abdominal content Whenever, every morning I wake up and I do what's called a naoli, which is where you draw your belly back and then the central sheath of the abdominals come forward and then I rotate it round and churn the abdominals. This is milder than that, but it has a similar effect. I'm telling you that in case you need a wee, because now's the time when you quit wee and then come back, <laughs> because it will make you need one otherwise. Now, if you're ready, or when you're ready, you're going to take, if you're sideways onto the screen, you might not be, but if you are, Take the foot that's closest to the screen into the place of the hand that's closest to the screen. Otherwise, just pick it any foot, doesn't matter. And then, like we did earlier, you're going to lift the back knee and replace it, stretch it, lift it, replace it. Feel into that. So play with a purpose and signs. Play is like what it sounds like. Purpose is why we're doing it, for absorption. Kids always play for that purpose. They play for absorption. Then, and they need that absorption. Then when you're ready, take the same hand as your front bent leg, onto your front bent, bent leg. Your fingers should be lateral on the little toe side of your thigh. Can you see? Like this. Okay. Then you push down onto your thigh, lift the other arm and turn. Those of you that could turn towards the screen are oh, now, but it doesn't matter if you can't. And then we're going to take a series of backwards and forwards movements and combining them with occasional pressing down and lifting and turning, okay? So we're, we're taking the attitude, of course, of the tortoise, not the hare, because the tortoise goes much further, wins the race. That means lots of little movements rather than trying to do it all in one big movement. So backwards and forwards. Now, as you're moving like this, your hand can be working up your thigh towards the crease at the top of the thigh. So it starts nearer the knee and it migrates as you push and turn. 
integrating the fibers with you and working your arm further onto the outside of the leg, bit by bit, fiber by fiber. After a while, you might feel you've optimized the turn. Now notice I'm not out of breath, and normally we do get out of breath because we compress our diaphragm. If you work slowly like this, fiber by fiber, you might not feel so compressed. Now your hands can come to prayer, if not already. Push the top hand, pushes the bottom hand down towards the middle of the chest. And you breathe into it. Paravita Pajva Konasana. And playing. I'm still playing back and forwards, partly because of the iliotibial tract, the IT band on the outer leg. Massaging it helps to release it. Many people get very tight on the IT band and it can affect your knee if that IT band becomes hypertonic. Okay. There are other stages, but I think this is enough for now. So we'll come out, <coughs> back onto our hands and knees, and take some deliberately deep breaths. So take a few, you might find your pelvis moving left and right. Serving the goddess is only like what you do if you go dancing, and after a while the dancing takes over and you have a great night. You might not call that serving the goddess, you might just say, I had a great night, or I love dancing. But it's the same thing, it takes a while before you cross over into that giving, and when it happens, there's a sort of spontaneity. That's the sign. The other foot comes forward into the place of the other hand, when you're ready. Boom, go. So the other foot into the place of the other hand. I'll come and check on you, make sure you're all okay. Great, okay. And similarly, good job everyone. Similarly to before, or the same as before, your hand comes onto your thigh. And your fingers face out, your thumb faces in, and you move back and forwards. When you're ready, you take the other arm onto the outside of the leg, that's why it's a paravita, it's a revolve. But you're massaging the thoracolumbar fascia. Big old word, just it means the fascia that connects various muscles to your back. Mm -hmm. So massaging that fascia takes time. There's many reasons why. We could do a talk, a long talk about fascia, but we don't have forever today. You can ask questions though. I'll stay on at the end for a bit if you have questions. Back and forth. And every so often the hand can go perhaps a little higher up your thigh. And every so often, your arm might feel there's a bit more space in the body for you to turn, to hook the arm or Shouldn't be forceful, huh? even though the word hatha in Sanskrit means with force, <clears throat> it's not being aggressive. Huh? No, it doesn't mean being aggressive. We're more the tortoise than we are the hare. Huh? Okay. So the Buddha says a jug fills drip by drip. I'm a firm believer in that myself. So I could work into this for ages, happily, very happily, fibre by fibre, muscle cell by muscle cell. But if you're ready to bring the hands to prayer, that's fine at any point. Remember to push the bottom hand down with the top hand, breathing deeply. Movement might still come. In my opinion, if I was doing my own practice, <clears throat> I would still be turning, you know, for quite a lot longer because of this incremental benefit. Okay, well done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back to hands and knees. Take a breath, take a few breaths, take a few deep breaths. Take your knees towards your wrists and turn your hands the other way round so your fingers face towards your knees. And then you breathe around the circumference of the wrists and potentially play. Play has unlimited configurations. So, you know, it could be side to side, could be backwards and forwards. We're not concerned about the specifics of the play, but the effectiveness of the play is what we're interested in. Is it producing the signs that we're looking for? releasing the breath, becoming absorbing. A sense of relief from feeling like I have to do this, I have to do that. The same relief you get when dancing happens, you know. And you're dancing and dancing and then suddenly dancing takes over and there's no I doing it. What a relief. 
And then we're going to take the knees back a little further and breathe into that. So that increases the stretch all around the carpal tunnel, which is a little archway of bones with ligaments at the other side, through which tendons and nerves and blood vessels have to pass into the fingers and hands. So it's, it's very, very useful to massage into that as a meditation, into that tissue. Left and right and forwards and backwards. And of course, this is a preparatory for Mayurasana, one of the very few poses that we still do in modern postural yoga that's actually in Hatha texts, Mayurasana. Now, just for your interest, and perhaps one or two might uh, feel this is appropriate, but most of us, as fine as we are, might be needing to come out by now. Just for your interest, the next stage would be, if you attack practicing Mayurasana, and maybe in one or two cases, that you lean forwards, the elbows would come into your belly and you come forwards and forwards and forwards until your feet lift. That's male rasna as you find it in Hatha text, but most of us are thinking, not today, thanks, Jim. I'll just come out now, because <laughs> you've got most of the benefits in that stretch in the wrist. Well done. One hand resting on the other if you're uh, come out. If you're still coming into male rasna a little bit, that's, that's fine. Stay with that too. And then we're just closing our eyes and taking deep breaths. Closing our eyes and taking deep breaths. They may be rolling on the shins, maybe dropping up the shoulder blades. Such a subtle meditation, dropping the shoulder blade. We all usually try the wrong method before we find the right method. Okay, release <coughs> your hands. Now, just let me know in the, this way uh, that if you've got a towel or a blanket there. Have you got a towel or a blanket? Do that. Let me, I'll come in closer so I can see. I can't see. I need to my glasses for this kind of towel. You've all got one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, get, good. <laughs> so, roll it up. I've got an Indian cotton blanket. Indian cotton blankets are by far the best thing to use for yoga. Believe me, I've tried every other kind. Indian cotton blanket's the best. And then you roll it up, I'm rolling it on my body just to show you, but you can roll it up on the floor if that's easier. <clears throat> Into a tight roll. I have to say the worst kind of blanket to use, and you might have one of these with you, and there's no you know, insult to you, is a fleece blanket. They're the worst ones to use. You know, the artificial fleece that yeah, I've got one out there in the garden. I use it for meditation around me, that's fine. But for this sort of thing, it doesn't work. Then we're going to put it down on the floor. Now you might find utility in a block and an old book and another block or book as well. You might not. That might be for your head and for your arms. Your head and arms, you might need those. I don't, but just to point that out before we start. <clears throat> This is going to go at the bottom edge of your shoulder blades, okay? The bottom edge of your shoulder blades, right? <laughs> so here. So the bottom edge of your shoulder blades roughly correlates to your xiphoid cartilage. That's the springy part of the breastbone at the bottom. There are three parts to your breastbone, the manubrium, the body, and then the xiphoid. Now, once you've got that position, it should, as you lay back on it, bring your chest up and over. Then you can stretch your arms over your head, and this way, it might be where you want some books for your hands to come onto. The feet are gonna to be together, and we're gonna try and draw everything into the middle. The madhya, in Sanskrit, means the middle. <clears throat> so we're gonna move left, we're gonna move right, we're gonna suck in. We're going to draw everything in towards the middle. Okay, we're then going to breathe into that. So sucking in the tummy from the front, the sides and the back. Sucking in the ribs from the sides as the chest moves over. So as you squeeze in from the sides, draw over towards your head. And this should be quite 
dynamic. If it digs in to your spinous processes locally, that is where the blanket is, is. If it digs in, it's uncomfortable, good. That's what we want. Legs should be together, ideally. Good job. Yeah, you're doing good. I'm checking on, if you think, oh, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right, I'm checking on you now. Stretch dynamically. Suck in and stretch. Suck in and stretch. Maximally. Suck in and stretch. Suck in and stretch. From front sides and back. Stretch a little more. I know you can. Where do you get that more from? You take that volume from somewhere. You take it from the front, the sides and the back of the body. That's where it comes from. Good, okay. It should be quite intense by now. So let it go nice and easy. Let the legs release, let the arms go to where they're comfy. And just let everything go a little softer and just feel the afterglow from those sensations, the afterglow. Catch a few deep breaths like that. A few deep breaths like that. Mm. Great, okay, bend the legs, place the feet on the floor, well done, and then roll, try not to roll into your bed or your drawers if you're in your bedroom, Sophie, yeah, but, but roll uh, to one side or the other and come up from the side, which way to roll. And once you've done that, we're gonna come into balasana because I just looked at the time and it's running away with us. No, I, I, you know, the only thing I don't like about these classes is they go too quick, they just go too quick. Balasana. Now, balasana should be done properly, and I'll show you how that is. So, some of you might need to use, like Oli, you might need to use that blanket there. Um, this is a, I'll show you a couple of different approaches. If I needed a, a lift underneath my uh, front ankles, I would, and if I needed a lift under my bum, I would also need a lift under my head and arms. Now, I've got yoga blocks, but you can use other stuff, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So this is if you need extra support, like here, huh? got the support under the ankles, it shouldn't be thin, this is even slightly too thick, it should be thin blanket roll, this in front of your bum, and then you would need something for your head so that you could come to about this height, so something like this. Huh? And you would possibly need something for your arms as well if you've got it. Huh? So there's lots of things you could use. <laughs> In our kitchen, we have one of those hoovers with a face on, Henry the Hoover. That would be great for my hands to come onto. But some of you don't. You need those things because your knees don't feel uncomfortable. So in that case, either case, it's toes together, toe tips touching, knees apart but not too wide. And you might be preparing the stuff you need, that's fine. It's when you're ready, it's toes together, knees apart. And then it's about dropping the groins. We've talked about the magic nature of dropping the shoulder blades, the sort of selflessness of it, the profound nature of it. Similarly here, the groins drop as you go forwards, which means your bum doesn't really lift. Huh? It doesn't really lift because everything's dropping. And it means you don't feel like you're falling forwards because it's all melting at the back. So you might only need a finger to come to the floor and you're still melting. And this is one of the great things, again, it's such a relief that it's not something driven by self. Me, myself and I, this is one of the sort of banes of adulthood is when you're a kid, you don't have to think too much about yourself, someone else pays the bills and you just run around in the garden and you know, do a bit of schoolwork. When you get older, it's like, oh, I, I am the one. I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do the other. But that is not true. In a pose like this, you're giving to the natural release of the groins, which has its own timing, completely aside to your agenda. And that's a relief. So for me, it takes however long it takes, but not being motivated by my normal tendency to reach out. Instead, I'm letting go, trusting. 
So in the Vajrasati Yoga Teacher Training Handbook, I think I refer to it as nature's pace, which was the way I used to like to refer to it when I wrote that handbook some 20 years ago. So take your time, take the body's time. Gift, and in this way you're giving to the goddess. The head might not come down at all in the time we have. <clears throat> or it might come down, but you still feel the release of the groins. So it's a profound, second only to Shavasana, opportunity to give. And <clears throat> artists and musicians and great chefs, they all know what it's like to give. There's a certain point where something just takes over. And that's why you paint. And that's why you sing. That's why you cook. That's why you do whatever it is you do. For that moment, you just pick up from country walks, whatever it is you do. Now we're going to come up the way we went down with our lovely, soft, relaxed groin. So, hold on. Great. And we're going to come into our final surrender, Shavasana. So you might want to get something warmer. <clears throat> it's possible you might want something underneath your knees. You probably won't need anything warmer if you're in Portugal. Looks like it's nice and warm in Portugal. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Paris looks all right. How's Paris? Is it? Yeah, it's all right. Good. Nice and warm. <laughs> yeah, good. <clears throat> so you're going to be laying on your back. Make sure you're warm. You look like you've got a nice sunny spot there, Antonia. Looks nice. Yay. <laughs> Now, a classic mistake in Shavasana is to take the legs too wide. And it's not your fault. It's because loads of yoga teachers have been telling people to take their legs too wide huh? for years and years. And why is that a mistake? Because if the legs go too wide, that as they roll out, it shortens the lower back, contracts the lower back, makes it draw up and tighten. And that affects your breath. Why does it affect your breath? Because your lower back is the place that your diaphragm inserts. So a support under the knees is nice, legs not too far apart, arms generously placed, that's the other mistake people make, is to take the arms too close to the body. Palms are definitely upwardly facing. Shoulder blades are scooted under your body. <clears throat> so you have a buoyant feeling in your chest. The neck should be long. And the attention is in towards the heart. Trust. The Sanskrit word is shraddha. Trust. Manifest. Trust. When you trust, you give. And when you give, you're giving to the moment. And the moment is the source <clears throat> of actual information, which you ride like a surfer rides a wave because they give. Mm. 
<coughs> Ma Chan <coughs> in Sanskrit. A very ancient chant that features in the Upanishads. Uh, and it basically says, I'll translate it before I chant it. Asatoma sad kamaya. Lead me from that which isn't true to that which is true. Tamasoma sad kamaya. Lead me from darkness to light. Mrityo ma amritam gamaya, lead me from that which is impermanent, perishable, to that which is forever, imperishable. Asato ma sat gamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, Mrityo ma amritam gamaya <clears throat> Asato ma sat gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityo ma amritam gamaya Asato ma sat gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityo ma amritam gamaya Asato ma sad gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityo ma amritam gamaya Asato ma sat gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityo ma amritam gamaya Your fingers, a little movement, <clears throat> and maybe toes. And when you feel ready, bend your legs and place the soles of your feet on the floor or bolster, whatever you got there. Scoot the buttocks under and feel the lower back release entirely into the breath. So scoot the buttocks under. Feel the lower back release entirely into the breath. Roll onto your left side. Knees drawn up, tummy skin soft. Roll onto your right side. Let a little light come in really gently and bring yourself round gently. You might stretch out an arm or a leg, you might rub your eyes or run a hand through your hair. And when the time feels right to come up, you bring yourself up from the side.
Thank you so much. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Two marvelous, at least two marvelous artists. There may be more uh, on today. Uh, Sophie Abbott and Antonia Thompson. Do check out their fantastic artwork. I have a painting by one and my next ambition is to get a painting by the other. It's coming up soon. And so do check out them and others have got marvellous art as well, I'm sure. Thanks for dialing in from Australia. Great to see you, Gav. And great to, thanks for dialing in from Portugal and Paris and New Haven and Hove and so on. I'm checking and looking at every single person so that you, uh, we know that we've seen each other and it's really good to see you. I can't tell you how good it is to see you and how lovely to see each other. So don't forget to put your gallery view on and you can see one another. And, and it's just nice, I think, to see your community that you practice with so regularly. So uh, thanks everyone from, for coming. Marvellous, you all are. Marvellous. Oh. <laughs> sending you love, sending you love. Yeah. You're picking it up. You know that when I'm sending it to you directly. You can feel it, right? It's to you directly. Um, oh, Jesse, Jesse, before you go, Jesse, where have you gone? Put your pic There's a picture behind Jesse. Look at Jesse. He's, he's an, his wife's an artist, and, she, and we've got this new feature going on where we're going to look at one of her paintings every week. So, so some of you checked out, you're missing this. So this is one of her paintings. Isn't that cool? I love it. It's really beautiful. This is today's painting we're seeing of Jesse's wife's paintings. What's your wife's name, Jesse? Just unmute yourself for a minute and tell us. Cause it's, she's called Claire, Claire Letter, and this is called The Garden. It's called The Garden, isn't it lovely? And we look forward to the next painting from Claire uh, next Saturday. We're going to have a painting from Claire. It's just a thing I just decided to do because they're nice and I find them lo lovely and uplifting as I find many of your paintings uplifting. As you can see, the one behind me I find uplifting too. So thank you very much for your time and that extra time to enjoy art. All be happy and well. Look forward to seeing you soon. Don't forget you can make a contribution. Uh, that's how I, um, you know, eat and stuff. Uh, so if you, if you can, uh, please do. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mwah! Mwah! Thank you. Thanks, Martina. How's the class going, by the way? It's going okay, great. If you need any advice or anything about it, let me know. <laughs> thanks, Kenny. Nice to see you, Daniel. Nice to see you. Thanks, Antonia. Thanks, that paint, I love it. Oh my God, thank you so much. Beautiful painting. Thank you, love it. More and more depths to it every day. Thanks, Daniel. Oh. Thank you. Enjoy Paris. Looks lovely there. Is it a nice day in Paris? Yeah. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. Can you check? Sunshine. It's okay. Ah. Yeah, it's so bad. Oh, look at that. Looks bright and beautiful. We're looking out of Paris right now. Anyone who's still in? Unfortunately, my flat. I'm, I'm despite I'm in the fourth floor. Still, uh -huh. it's quite dark here. Oh yeah, but a beautiful day. Oh look, you got a nice view. I like that building opposite. Yeah, the best is the the garden down there. Oh wow. Is that for everyone to share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a corridor, <clears throat> so it's not it's not a massive place. But this man who's been living in the in the buildings for for thirty years, and he's been building that garden like a lot of plants. It's beautiful. Wow! At least wow. Like it's Thank you very place. much for giving me an insight into your lovely um, home. Cool, Tim. Have a have a good weekend, and thank you very much. Thank you. See you very soon. Bye bye. Bye. bye.